This is The Conscious Investor presented by Nuveen. I'm here with Martin Kremenstein, the head of retirement and ETF solutions at Nuveen. Can you talk to me about the ESG metrics and what do they measure and how good are they of measures of social responsibility and where do they fall short? Sure, so ESG stands for environmental, social and governance. And what that really is, is a framework for analyzing companies and really assessing um, how well they compare to their peers uh, in terms of performance against these metrics. Under E, you have, for environmental, you have uh, water usage, uh, waste um, production, and general kind of environmental behavior, like how efficient they are at managing their resources and also looking after the environment around them. Uh, under social, it's around how well do they treat their clients, how well do they treat their workers, uh, and then there are also some diversity aspects around the, the management and the workforce. Uh, and then under governance, I mean, that's around um, share class structure and governance structure within the company. How well run is the company? And when you take it all together, what you're really looking at is another way of assessing a company without looking at its balance sheet and looking at how it impacts the, the broader, broader society at large. And where do these do a really good job? And where do you think that they, they fall a little short? What can't they measure? Sure, so I think what they do, they do a good job in terms of how well is company A doing compared to company B. Um, but it's less good, I think, at looking at what is the overall mission of a company uh, in terms of is it out there to do good, and if so, how do, you, how do you manage that? I think the other way where it kind of falls a little bit short is that it's, um, it's a little bit of a framework. So lots of people have different views around what is more important. For some people, it's around environmental that's more important. For others, it's social. For others, it's governance. You know, as many people as there are in a room, there are going to be different opinions as to what actually is important. And so unless you are going to go and build a bespoke portfolio for someone in a, in a separately managed account, there's going to be have, some, have to be some degree of compromise around how that ESG framework is actually going to be applied. And are they self-reported? Are companies tell, sharing these metrics with you with, I mean, with investors at large? Yeah, so most of the data is public. Uh, it's a combination of self-reported and also analysis done by, you know, analysts who are pouring over company fact sheets, uh, um, you know, uh, their, their regulatory reporting and so forth. So because of that, you do tend to get better reporting from larger companies, uh, but you can get reporting uh, for companies all the way down the cap structure, uh, cap size, and also um, internationally as well. You know, we're able to produce uh, an ESG framework that enables you to look at large cap value as well as small cap, but also emerging markets and developed markets as well. And do you have advice for people who want to invest along their values and who maybe haven't spent a lot of time looking at the ESG metrics? What is some way to get them over the hurdle where it feels like there's just too many options and they, they want to put their money where their values are? Sure, so I think there are a couple of things. First of all, they are going to have to define for themselves what, what's important to them. Um, and you know, there are certain ESG providers that have a very specific slant to how they're doing it and they have to decide whether that's what they're looking for, uh, whether it's based on religious or certain other social aspects. Um, if they're looking for just general you know, ESG and in terms of framework for companies that are better stewards of their, you know, the environment and social, um, then really they should either look for ESG providers. Um, there are certain companies that have been in this space for a long, long time and, and all ESG funds will be labeled ESG or responsible investing or impact because you know, if you have an ESG fund, you are gonna put that in the name somewhere. Um, and then you need to look at how the, the products work. You know, look at the, the criteria uh, by which companies are being scored. That should be very, very clear and apparent within the, the fund's literature. If it isn't, maybe then move on to another provider. Um, if you're looking at your retirement plan, maybe talk to uh, whoever runs your company's retirement plan and ask them about responsible investing options for that plan. Is there a trade-off? Do you feel like that you can still make money and invest it responsibly? Uh, so historically, the knock has been that to actually have uh, responsible investing, you had to give up some performance. Uh, I think we're seeing now that that isn't the case. Um, and we're actually seeing, uh, you know, lots of times where using an ESG framework can actually help you avoid companies with bad um, practices. You know, for example, we had the Equifax scandal uh, sometime last year, right? Well, Equifax had actually been downgraded by major ESG data providers over data privacy and security issues about 18 months to two years beforehand. Um, you know, within our large cap growth ETF, um, Facebook hadn't been included because it scored relatively poorly compared to other tech companies over data privacy concerns. That was not something that I ever considered as part of the ESG framework is data privacy, but it's very important to a lot of people. A lot of people are divesting from Facebook now. 
How how does that metric work in well, so, ESG? So you know when you're looking at a, a company, when the, the data provider scoring the company, so we use MSCI as our data provider. And when they score the company, they score it based on all the different you know uh, criteria. Uh, and under social, data privacy is in there. Um, but also when you're looking at controversial business practices, which is another. Um, another way of scoring companies, you look at things that could be controversial. Uh, and so the data privacy thing had come up from the, I think the 2014 uh, kind of conversation Facebook had with the government. So that was something that was always on the radar. And so Facebook doesn't have a particularly bad ESG score on absolute terms, but compared to the rest of the tech sector, which tends to do better, it scored relatively poorly. So within our large cap growth um, ETF, Right, it scored poorly in tech. It didn't make the cutoff for tech, so we didn't have it in there. So, you know, last year as Facebook did quite well, our performance suffered. This year, without Facebook in there, our performance has done quite well. And divesting seems to be one way in which a lot of people want to express their values. Is that something that you're seeing? Is is and how effective is divesting as a method of um, making a difference? So divestment is one tactic you can use. I think you know we have certain industries where we do divest from. So uh, weapons manufacturers, um, alcohol gambling, tobacco, uh, and then uh, nuclear power. Um, however, you know those are industries that we feel that like they're essentially they're put in that sin stock basket, and so we divest. Beyond that, I think if you are just doing straight divesting, what you are doing is taking yourself out of the conversation with, with the, uh, the company, with the issuer of the stock. Uh, for example, if you were to divest from energy companies, you couldn't actually be in a conversation with them as a major shareholder, encouraging them to look at, say, renewables. Right? So you need to kind of weigh up divestment, which is, all right, I feel good because I'm not invested in what I think is a sin stock, versus, well, I have no say in trying to influence that company's behavior. So it can be a little bit self-defeating because you've now removed yourself from that conversation with the company. And how much does it cost to be a good, to be a socially responsible investor? Are fees higher on socially responsible investment products? Not particularly. I mean, we, we price our, our, our ETFs somewhere between the straight uh, kind of market cap weighted benchmarks and, you know, smart beta. And when you look at how we're scoring the companies, someone once said to me, well, it's very much like non-financial quality factors. So you can look at ESG as almost like a smart beta overlay, particularly when you consider the risk management aspects of it. Um, you know, we actually put together a series of portfolios using all the building blocks within our ESG ETF suite, and it came in most of the time under 30 basis points. So we think investors can actually, you know, invest according to their beliefs without paying over the odds to do so. And could you talk about that a little bit, like the smart beta and the benefit from investing in from not investing in things like Facebook? Well, so if you think about the factors themselves, they are effectively uh, how well run is the company. So you're looking at quality factors, right? And <clears throat> quality is one of the more nebulous of the smart beta major factors. And so you could say, well, actually, this is just another way of defining quality in a company, right? Does it waste resources? Does it look after its customers and get stay out of trouble with the regulators? Uh, and you know, does it have a decent management structure that encourages accountability? Um, and so by having that framework in place, you're able to avoid companies like Volkswagen. Uh, BP, before the um, Deepwater Horizon incident, had actually been downgraded and removed from major um, ESG indices over concerns about its outsourcing of maintenance of offshore oil wells, right, which is precisely what happened there. So it's really a very, very good risk management tool. And you know, MSCI did research, and I think they found that companies uh, in the bottom 10% for ESG score had a much, much higher likelihood of what they deemed to be a catastrophic or a material drop in share price uh, from, a, from, a, from an incident. Uh, and by material, they were talking 90%. And so, you know, by, by actually having this framework in place, you are really putting in place a, uh, a method for trying to avoid tail risk from companies that are badly run and may end up having serious, serious uh, scandals in the press.